Okay, we're going to examine the elbow now. We start the elbow examination simply by inspecting it. And we're going to look for areas of swelling, inflammation. Sometimes you can actually see things like protruding bones, which fortunately we don't have today. After inspection, we'll move to palpation. So we're going to palpate around the olecranon process in the back, feeling for any areas of swelling or tenderness. We're going to palpate in the joint line, just on the sides of the olecranon. Again, feeling for any swelling or tenderness. Come all the way out to the lateral epicondyle. You can feel the bony prominence in the lateral aspect of the elbow. And there's a medial epicondyle, which may not show up really well in the film, but it's just the bony prominence that's on the medial side of the elbow. No significant tenderness there. As we're feeling, we oftentimes watch for grimacing too. He may not tell us right away, but sometimes we can see. When we're done with our palpation, we'll move to range of motion. So I'll ask you to flex your elbow and extend your elbow. And then we're going to ask for supination, which would be turning the palm up, and pronation, turning the palm all the way down. Normally we get about at least zero degrees of extension. Sometimes people can actually extend beyond zero degrees. So this being our zero degree plane and then flexing, usually we can get up to just over 140 degrees. The pronation and supination, if you start in a neutral position, should be approximately 90 degrees in each direction. So starting neutrally, supination, again, turning your hand up like you're going to hold your cup of soup, and pronation would be dumping out the soup. Okay, we're going to next check for strength. So what we'll check for strength, I'll try to stabilize the joint. I'll be holding on to his hand and putting my hand up on his upper arm and asking him to flex his elbow against my resistance. Good, good, strong. For extension, it's just the opposite. Hold on the back surface of the elbow, top surface of the upper arm, and ask him to extend. Extend your elbow. Very good. Okay. Two of the common problems around the elbow uh, are medial epicondylitis and lateral epicondylitis. What happens with those conditions is that the muscle and tendon units, as they originate around the elbow, wind up getting inflamed, usually from some kind of overuse type injury. In fact, the lateral epicondylitis is commonly referred to tennis as tennis elbow, so people playing a lot of tennis and repeating their backhand stroke can develop inflammation around this origin of the muscle tendon unit. So when we check for medial and lateral epicondylitis, we can do two things. Either we can stretch the inflamed tissue, which will irritate it, or we can have that same inflamed tissue contract against resistance. So in the case of lateral epicondylitis, this being the extensor surface of the elbow, typically what we would try to do is fully flex the elbow into a stretch. And if that caused him to complain of pain up here around the lateral epicondyle, we would find that to be consistent with that diagnosis of lateral epicondylitis. The other thing we do is have him in this flexed position, and then we resist against his attempt at extending his wrist. So as you try to bring your wrist up now, again, he's contracting this extensor muscle group. And if that causes pain over the lateral epicondyle, that's consistent with lateral epicondylitis. It's simply the opposite for medial epicondylitis. In this case, we would try to extend the wrist. It's the flexor muscles that come over this medial surface and attach around the medial epicondyle. So if that stretching caused pain around the medial epicondyle, or if the resisted wrist flexion caused pain around the medial epicondyle, those would be consistent with medial epicondylitis. Okay.